Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to St. Mary Parish. We are delighted to have you here with us this afternoon as we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. The annual Knights of Columbus Christmas Party will be held on December 3rd from 12 to 3. All members of the parish and the collaborative are invited and there is no cost to attend. You can see the bulletin for more details. Next weekend there will be a second collection. That second collection is for the retired religious sisters of the Archdiocese. As always, your generosity is greatly appreciated. Our gathering hymn this afternoon is number 407, Lord of All Hopefulness. Our celebrant is Father Graham, if you'll please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. To appear ourselves this evening to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first pause and call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us all to everlasting life. Receive our prayer. 
Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the sun of justice with its healing rays. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we do not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day we worked, so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right. Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, 
We instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way, by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The Word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will be not left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, They will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons. And they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand. For I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. And they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On Thursday night, I was uh, invited to attend a uh, dinner up at the American Legion uh, on um, Federal Furnace. Uh, the Lions Club was holding an annual meeting they do this time of year. And what the Lions Club does that, at that time of year is they invite a number of different organizations from throughout Plymouth, uh, organizations that all spend uh, their time and their talents and their money uh, trying to help people in need, you know, feeding the hungry, putting, um, helping to pay rent, um, 
helping people to find clothing, uh, all the needs that come up, you know. And, of course, there's always um, the groups that help, particularly with uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas that are coming up. And so I went up there, and I went up with um, several members of St. Mary's Parish. I was up there with uh, Deacon Paul. Uh, Deacon Paul was up there because we were invited uh, with, with Deacon Paul because they wanted to give a, a donation to um, Matthew's Kitchen for the work that they do in helping to feed people on Saturday mornings. And then um, uh, two other members of our parish from the St. Vincent de Paul Society had also been invited up, uh, Mike McFarland and Joe Pickett. And uh, they were there because uh, within the last couple of years, we formed a St. Vincent de Paul Society in this parish. There wasn't one when I first came. There had been one a number of years ago. And they work very soundly behind the scenes, and the lines that I just, I mean, within days, had found out that the St. Vincent de Paul Society was active here at St. Mary's. So they were invited up, and they, they presented us with checks to help us with our work. And what really struck me was there was a big crowd there. And one by one, uh, after we ate, we were called up to receive um, a gift from the Lions Club and uh, to say a couple of words about the ministry that we were doing. And what struck me was this, uh, two things. One, the amount of work that's done in Plymouth to help people is absolutely humbling. You have no idea uh, the number of organizations and people that are reaching out trying to help people in regular times, let alone these very difficult times economically that we're in right now. And just group after group after group comes forward, and it's really impressive to see. And it makes you, it's humbling, and it makes you proud to be part of it. The other thing that struck me was this. Uh, there are a couple schools that were called up, but if you sat there, 90% of the groups that were called forward um, were churches, uh, Catholic churches, congregational churches, evangelical churches, um, Lutheran churches. Uh, it's amazing. And, and I walked away saying to myself, People think that the church is dying a lot of times. And obviously, we've seen better days in, in, as far as numbers go. But the work done in the name of Jesus Christ by churches in Plymouth is absolutely staggering. And if we went away, um, there would be a real need that would, was, would not be being met uh, in our community. And now, I'm saying that because, and this isn't really per se what I was planning on preaching about, but I wanted to say a few words first to tell you what's happening. I'm very proud of the work that's done by this parish. We didn't even talk about Friends of Lazarus. But uh, you, last week we announced that uh, the St. Vincent de Paul Society, which has been helping so many people, and the thing is, someone said to me recently, with all the news about the homeless people both in Plymouth and in Kingston, you always hear a lot up in Kingston about the Beale House, which is connected with the Unitarian Church. And someone said to me, I wish people would hear more about the work that we do. Well, the thing is, the work that the St. Vincent de Paul Society does is meant to be done quietly. Very often, people don't know who the members of the society are. And they don't do it to receive some type of praise or publicity. They very quietly, and you have no idea, the amount of people that have been helped in St. Mary's Parish by the members of this parish who have formed the St. Vincent Paul Society uh, with everything you could possibly think of. It's truly uh, it's, it's amazing to see. Um, well, we announced last week that they're taking up their collection to help people at Thanksgiving. They always need help. At Thanksgiving, they try particularly to try to help families. And one of the things I heard time and again Thursday night at the Lions Club is every group that got up that runs a food pantry, uh, that offers a hot meal, that provides clothing, they all have said how the demands for their services have gone through the roof. So have ours. Um, and so there's always need for support. And I know it's difficult for people to support. We thank you for what you've done. But for Thanksgiving, uh, these envelopes, are in the, they're in the church last week. And, and if you want to help with Thanksgiving, you can take his, put these in, with the collection. Or if you missed the collection, uh, you give it to me. Or there's even a drop box, a lock box on the front door of the, of the rectory here. Drop it in there. And it says right on it, please place your offering of cash, check, or stop a shop gift card in this envelope. And it'll go to the St. Vincent de Paul Society. And I guarantee you, uh, it'll be put to good use. And uh, it's what we're called to do. That being said, I'll, I'll now give you an abbreviated homily. Uh, 
But I thought it was important that you know. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing what happens. We're not just about praying. We're about doing uh, This, If you look around right now, look at the windows, how dark it is outside. We're coming to the end of the year. And as we come to the end of the year, the church readings come to the We're at the end of the church here. Next week is the last Sunday in church in ordinary time. Christ the King. And as you know, if you notice, as we get near the end of the year, the readings, like the, like the evening uh, around us, the readings become darker. They, they speak of the end times. You know, so we have Malachi uh, speaking about you know, his words. Lo, the day is coming blazing like an oven. When all the proud and all the evils will be stubble, you know, the last judgment. We have Jesus today speaking about the temple being destroyed and speaking about the end times. And it's difficult to hear those. It's difficult to preach about those sometimes. But um, this, this passage from Luke's gospel, I think, it needs to be read on a couple of different levels. One of the levels is it's about the resurrection. It's about last judgment. It's about our belief that we will rise from the dead. It's about that we believe that we're going to be judged. But the other level has to do with what we, thought, what we place as important in our lives. I mean, look at the scene. Jesus has finally reached Jerusalem. He's been traveling with his disciples all this time. Now, we've been hearing these gospels as he makes his way towards Jerusalem where he's going to be crucified. And they've listened to him. They've witnessed his great miracles. And they know there's something powerful happening here. And they're, they're Jews. And when they get to Jerusalem, the holy city, they come to the temple. And the temple, we don't have an equivalent of the temple of Solomon. The temple not only was the holiest place in the world to Jews of Jesus' time, it was literally the one place where God was. That's why people traveled there for sacrifice. But it was one of the great mysteries of, of the ancient world. It was an imposing impressive building and they finally get there and he's standing there with the crowds who have listened to him and we're told they're talking about the temple look at it some of them have never seen it before and they're talking about how it's adorned with costly stones and votive offerings it's incredible and what does Jesus say it's going to come a day it's going to be gone it's going to all be gone it's going to be wiped away there won't be a stone upon another stone I think what's important about that is this. We're reminded as disciples that while we live in this world and we engage in the things of this world and we're called to experience the joys and all the things this world has to offer, we're reminded that this world isn't all that there is, that there's something else. That, and it doesn't matter what we conceive to be the most important thing in our lives. You know, we just went through an election season. I'm 60 years old. For about the 15th time, I was told that this was the most important election of our life. Well, I've survived all the other ones. I'll probably survive this one, too. I've seen people held up as being, that's the person we ought to follow. Or, or I've seen trends come and go. Or I, We all see people who... They want to be famous or they want to be rich. They want to, fine. But no matter what you have in your life, and no matter how important you think it is or how important you think some person is, everything is going to pass away. It's all going to go away. We live in this world to be in the world in the here and now, but we believe that there's so much more, that there's a fullness of life that God wants us to experience. And if we spend our time focusing solely on what we can see and what we can achieve here as being an end in and of itself, then we're missing the, the point of what Jesus is telling us. Jesus loves the temple. He's a, faith, he's a faithful rabbi. He's a Jew. He's the son of God, but he, he respects the temple. But he knows that no matter how beautiful or how important it may be, it's going to pass away. In the year 70, the Roman army comes in and wipes the temple off the face of the earth. And to this day, it doesn't exist. All that's left today, to this day is the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. We're reminded it's good to enjoy the pleasures of this life. It's good to want so many of the things this world has to offer. But these readings remind us that this isn't all there is. 
Our gaze should always be cast to what comes next. And Jesus tells us that we need to prepare ourselves to be able to live not in this life, but in the life to come. And how do we prepare ourselves to live in the life to come? By being the people that Christ has called us to be. That's why I can start by telling you about the great work being done in Plymouth. By helping those who are in need, by feeding the hungry, by clothing the naked, by welcoming the stranger, by visiting the sick and in prison, we are preparing ourselves to live in this life, but we are really preparing ourselves to live in the life to come. May God bless you. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And together now with trusting hearts, let us bring our prayers and needs and place them before our God. For the church, that we may offer hope and vision to all the human family in times of confusion and offer support to those who are searching for God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of perseverance, that God will strengthen and sustain us in remaining faithful in our discipleship in times of trial and distress, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For children who are rejected, abused, or neglected, that God's tender compassion will comfort them and that they may experience love and nurture, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For families that are divided and in opposition to one another, that God's peace may touch their hearts and lead them toward reconciliation and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all veterans, that they may know God's presence in their hearts, be healed of physical and mental injuries, and be blessed with health and well-being, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for the intentions of those gathered here, known to God alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Loving fathers, with confidence this day we come before you with our prayers, needs, and intentions. We ask you to receive them. We make them now as always in the name of Jesus Christ who is our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen. By the way, anyone who would like to contribute, the, the envelopes I mentioned are at the doors of the church, um, these white envelopes, and they'll be used solely for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Our offering hymn today, number 466, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
Pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, and all the redeemed praise you. And all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them, light the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter into my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
our communion song today, number 598, Christ be our light.
We pray, Almighty God, that those, those to whom you give the joy of participating in the divine mysteries may never be parted from you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The one thing I forgot to announce is uh, Father Antonio's dad did pass this week. He passed away on, on actually on Thursday night. <clears throat> he was actually buried this morning in, in Brazil, so he, he wasn't be able to go anyway. So uh, it's been kind of a tough week, so keep uh, Father Antonio and his family in your prayers. The Lord be with you. With May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn together today, number 443, How Can I Keep From Singing? 443. My life.